Senator Tammy Baldwin is coming out in support of President Trump's new free trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. We had the chance to talk with her about what this bill gets right and how it improves upon NAFTA. Well, first of all, um, I had been a strong opponent of the original NAFTA agreement because I feel like we lost uh, way too many jobs. And so the um, ability to renegotiate, to strengthen some of the provisions um, was a very important step. But I still felt that some of what was negotiated fell short of where we needed to go. Thankfully, when the House took up this measure, um, a lot of the changes and um, improvements that I had called for, especially in uh, the agricultural provisions of the USMCA were incorporated, and now um, I am uh, favoring the USMCA. Um, I've announced that when it comes to the Senate floor, I will support it um, because I think that it will uh, get rid of some of the unfair trade practices that we saw in Canada. It will eliminate um, Mexico's uh, limitations on cheese uh, exports from our country to theirs. And it will expand markets for our farmers while containing some pretty strong labor protections um, for U.S. workers. In 2018, Wisconsin exported $7 billion worth of goods to Canada and $3.5 billion to Mexico. One of America's oldest and largest dairy companies became the second major milk producer to file for bankruptcy in the last two months. Borden Dairy Company said it cannot afford its debt load and pension obligations. The company said it's been hurt in a drop in overall milk consumption in the U.S. since 2015. They noted that more than 2,700 family dairy farms went out of business in last year and 94,000 have stopped producing milk since 1992. Dean Foods, America's largest milk producer, filed for bankruptcy in November. Borden has 3,300 employees. It's unclear whether this company intends to stay in business in the long term or liquidate. Borden's history dates back to before the Civil War when its founder developed the first successful commercial method of condensing milk in 1856. A recent survey of commercial beekeepers showed that 50 billion bees, that's more than seven times the world's human population, were wiped out in a few months during winter of 2018-19. Now this is the highest survey number since it began. Beekeepers attributed the high mortality rate to pesticide exposure, diseases from parasites and habitat loss. Hunger is also another killer. Many hives don't get enough food, a problem made worse when people weed. Dandelions and clovers in our yards are helpful to bees. Beekeepers now are working with universities to actually change bees' genetics to make them stronger. There's a new breed of bee, if you will, from Penn State that is going to actually fight the mites and can pick them off of other bees. As you start some of your annual winter repair work, it can be tempting to just order parts right from your smartphone. But working with a dealership may save you money in the long run because buying parts that are designed to properly fit your machine makes it more efficient. Yeah, there's a lot out there today, especially with the internet. The environment has changed for not only equipment but also parts. And we can fulfill both needs there if, if price is a concern. We can definitely find an aftermarket solution for you rather than having you go out online and look. And on the OEM side, the advantage there is having a one-year warranty with the parts that you buy through us. So we can back that up and we'll work with you the best we can on price. Just give us a shot is really what we're saying. Especially when it comes to working on the electronic portions of your equipment, it's critical to make sure the components will continue to operate as designed. You know, many farms have moved to feed pads or bunkers to store their harvest. However, there is actually a growing demand for silos once again, as farmers look to automate some daily chores. Here's a look at what is keeping the harvester relevant on a modern farm. Very relevant in terms that, you know, we still make them. That's a big question we get at the show is, yes, we still make harvesters every day. We still put them up. Uh, we ship them worldwide. We're into Europe and Canada. We, uh, in, in the States, we still uh, tear down old ones and, and move them and put them back up. So we, we've always have a pretty big demand for that.
Harvestor's oxygen-limiting technology continues to be a selling point when it comes to increasing efficiency. The storage loss is, a, is an issue, so the guys that are using it, the, uh, the data that we've done with the uh, USDA, we can, if they're milking or feeding cows out of a harvest store, there's about a 5.7% more milk that the cows will give per day uh, out of a harvester versus a bag or a bunker. So there's, you've got that. And then the storage loss that you don't have, that plus the milk still makes it a very viable system to use. Farmers are drawn to the idea that once their feed is in the silo, they can fully automate the feeding process thanks to conveyors and other accessories. That means no daily startup for the tractor or skid steer. But it's not only small farms finding uses for silos. You know, we'll still go after any, any size farm that we can. Uh, uh, right now with the high moisture corn, we've got a lot of nutritious wanting to feed a fermented corn. Uh, product, so we're using the high moisture corn, so we're still getting on a thousand, two thousand, three thousand cow. So it's still uh, very viable for all different sizes. The brand's other flagship product, the Slurry Store, maintains its share of the market as an environmentally sound way to store manure. Its above ground design minimizes the danger of runoff, leaching, and groundwater contamination compared to other storage methods. It's not a problem. We're above ground. It's positive containment. The way the engineer, the floor, and the foundation is, is, is not a problem. And, uh, you know, we've got a good proven track record of the thousands of slurry stores that we have in Wisconsin. Uh, we work very closely with the, with the NRCS. And, uh, and, and since they help have programs that pay for these systems, and uh, everybody up here that's used them has used them for years and has gotten along really well with them.